I'm Carly Gittleman from the Food Prescription Box program here in Port Alberni. We're delivering fresh local foods to people released from the hospital who may need some extra support. I'm very excited to introduce you to some of the local producers whose food I'm delivering in the boxes each week. here at Vancouver Island Green and Milling to learn how Wayne Smith packages and processes his organic green products. This is a milling facility for flour and cereal. Uh, it is the, uh, the, the uh, it's where all of the products for Vancouver Island Green and Milling are, everything we keep here is uh, dehumidified and refrigerated. Mm -hmm. uh, for, because it's all 100% whole grain. We don't do any sifting or any removal of any part of any product, you know. Um, so it comes in here clean and it goes out as a whole grain, maximum mm -hmm. nutritious, fresh milled products, right? We have a whole product line of uh, various things we do. Um, and from here, it pretty much supplies a lot of the organic bakeries on Vancouver Island and, uh, and a, a whole pile of retail customers. A lot of my customer base is in the Nymore, Victoria, Courtney. I spent the whole day in Courtney yesterday. And uh, so we got bakeries and we got a lot of retail customers. So rather than them driving down, which is just not appropriate, you know, it just doesn't make sense. We, what I do is I have a van, that, a delivery van that kind of goes with the business and, and uh, mm -hmm. I'll load that van up and I take it around and I deliver. Um, my customer base is primarily, uh, believe it or not, yeah, I would say the demographics are, it's going to be mostly young ladies about your age with families. Hmm. They want the healthy, and they have done the research. They know what they're doing. I learned a lot about the nutrition and the health of uh, of what people have and what they want from my customers. Mm -hmm. A lot of my customers are real experts in this business right, themselves. Because you're using the raw grain and you're milling it um, with its. Uh, it, 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 it's actually the the brand. The brand. Like a seed. If you look at the way a seed is composed, you've got all your internal parts, which consist of the endosperm and the. And, and, and the germ and all that, then it moves itself to get the outside the brand, which is the hard layer. And when you hear the term brown flour, what that means is that the brand has been ground in like we're doing there right now. And you can actually see it in the product when you actually look at it. Can you see that brown thing? That's, that brown little patch in the middle? That's actually the brand. Right. It has a different weight than the rest of it, and it's going to tend to, just like a river, it's going to have a little back eddy in there, and that's why we have to mix the flour. It's going to go off to certain parts of it. This week's food box will have two kilogram bags of red wheat flour. Hello, my name is Shelly. I'd just like to welcome everybody back to the 3rd Ave Recycle Depot. Uh, finally reopened after months of being off due to, as everybody knows, the COVID. So we'd just like to give you a little bit of info about what's happening, what's new, what's changed. Um, obviously, I'm still here, a few more people working out front. We are trying to be tour guides for the beginning here with new hours of operation and new system in play. Um, so let's start with the, the operation. It's Tuesday to Saturday, 9.30 to 5. We're closed Sundays and Mondays now. As you will see, we have new bins, new program, new new setup that's new to you and new to us as well. Um, so right now we're just trying to be a tour guide, explain to you what's happening, the three different entry points, the uh, program, what we're taking. Pretty much the same as we did before, only of course we'd like you to have it pre-sorted. Um, and if you could see the smile on my face, you know I'm saying that with a smile on my face. Um, because when you start, the three different entry points are if you have cardboard, you can just do the cardboard paper. Um, if you have more recycling, like what's in your blue bins, then you would go through the cardboard paper, carry on. We have a glass bin. We have the flexible plastic bags, of course, you know, the noisy crinklies, as I always said. And then the glass jars, clean, no lids. Uh, the plastic containers, tin cans, coffee cups, all that like. Same containers or same idea, just different containers. Your white styrofoam, colored styrofoam, and the soft, stretchy plastic bags. 
And then the other entry point or you carry on is if you have your light bulbs, your batteries, your smoke alarms, your small appliances, computer stuff, TVs, we still take all that. And then of course the paint. The only thing we ask is if one of us is not with you and you need to go in the building with any of that, you rate for us. One of us will take you in, show you where it goes and where you can sanitize and then head out. We sanitize daily and nightly for your convenience, our pleasure, <laughs> just to keep it all clean. Um, you will see a difference here as we go through of how clean the inside is. We've already been told by some people it's really clean like a hospital, so hopefully you're not scared to come down, do your recycling, say hi. We've missed you, come on back. Welcome back to another edition of Community Colour, bringing you arts and entertainment right here from the Alberni Valley. Well, the current art exhibit at the Rollin Art Centre is with a grandmother and grandson duo. Now, this is featuring Pam Turner and her grandson from Victoria, Rylan Bourne. And you must stop by and see it because this is his first time exhibiting it anywhere in a gallery, and it's longtime exhibitor for Pam Turner. Now, she has a lot of abstracts, some flowers, she mixes a little bit of collage and acrylic paint. So please stop by the Roland Art Centre. This show goes on until October 31st. Well, the next art exhibit comes up on November 4th. I know it's a bit of ways, but just mark your calendar. Cynthia Bonesky and Jan Friesen will be our next featured artists here at the Roland Art Centre. Bit of flowers to landscapes, oils to acrylics. So this exhibit runs from November 4th to the 28th. Well, the Community Arts Council is sad to say our annual giant book sale for November of this year has been cancelled. Due to the pandemic, we want to stay safe and have everybody else remain safe in their homes. So if you can contact us, you can have our mystery book bags, but please mark your calendars for this year's sale that was scheduled for November 6th and 7th at the Athletic Hall is now cancelled. We were hoping that we will still be able to do it in May, but we will wait until time comes to let us know on that. But if you have any other questions, you can contact me at the Lawn Art Centre. Well, here's a great way to get a bag of books. A mystery bag of books are available right now at the Roland Art Center. Each bag contains 10 books and there are $20. Now, it's a great deal. All bags are containing of one genre, so we have mysteries, we have biographies, we have science fiction, we have romance, children's books, you name it, we have it. So you can call us to reserve your bag or you can stop by the Roland Art Center and pick up your bag today. Well, here's an easy way to help the Roland Art Center and support local arts by donating your bottles at the Bottle Depot. Now we'll have all the information on the screen and all you need to do is drop off your bottles and say you're, you're like to donate to the Roland Art Center and add our account and there you go. An easy way to help support local art. Well the Roland Art Center is looking for help. We're having a garden slash Christmas hanging lights work party happening right here in the Roland Art Center gardens on Monday October 19th at 9:30. Now we're looking for help for doing a little bit of raking and virtually putting the garden away for the winter months as well as hanging our Christmas lights or and we need lots of help so please join us or tell your friends and families to come by on Monday October 19th at 9 30 right here at the Roland Arts Centre. Well the Community Arts Council is very sad to announce our fundraiser Celtic Chaos has to be cancelled. Um, unfortunately the Capitol Theatre cannot hold the amount of, of patrons who have our tickets um, in light of the pandemic so unfortunately this event for this year has been cancelled. So anybody who has tickets can certainly stop by the Roland Arts Centre for a refund or we are saying if you would like to donate that ticket price back to us, we are offering a very special tax receipt. So if you'd like to stop by the Roland Art Centre, we can write you off a tax receipt for that, which would certainly help us here at the Roland Art Centre. Well, Shars presents Zoom. Yep, everybody's going by Zoom and so is Shars Landing. So Words on Fire are now going to be presented twice a month at Shars Landing or through Zoom, uh, the second Wednesday of each month as well as the last Wednesday of each month. So for information um, for her tickets, you can contact her through the website that's available right now on the screen. Well, that's it for another edition of Community Colour. Now, if your organization would like to share any upcoming events, please contact me at the Roland Art Centre. So until next time, I'm Melissa Martin for Community Colour. Hello, this is Kirsten Smith, Collections Curator at the Alberni Valley Museum. Today on Museum at Home, we're looking at the Valleyettes. 
baton twirling, and drum majorettes had become part of popular culture in Canada in the late 1930s and 1940s. It arrived in Port Alberni in 1948 with the Valiettes, a drill team sponsored by the BPO Elks. In existence for eight years, from 1948 to 1956, the Valiettes took part in every major event held in Port Alberni and also travelled for parades and performances. They visited a number of places on Vancouver Island. Here we see them marching in a parade in Victoria. In 1951, a 15-car convoy transported the group to Duncan for a performance. They also traveled on the Lower Mainland and BC Interior, visiting Chilliwack, Mission, and Penticton. They performed at halftime at a BC Lions game in Vancouver, and they traveled across the prairies with a number of stops on their way to perform at an Elks convention in Saskatoon. The Valiettes were supported by the local Elks Lodge. When trying to hire a majorette group to be part of the Elks annual May Day celebration, Elks leader Cliff Lee was put out by the $200 fee. He said, Give me $150 and we'll have our own drill team. Early training for the group was provided by Bob Fulton, as well as Miss Robbie Brown and Mrs. Lois Tassie. These two women had experience in Canadian Women's Forces and assisted in the drilling. The name for the team was decided in a contest. Bob Fulton won a two-pound box of chocolates for coming up with the name Valiettes. In the early years, members mainly made their own outfits, white blouses and skirts with a purple belt, tasseled boots ordered from Vancouver at $3 a pair, and homemade paper hats. The Fuller Brush Man was an Elks member and donated 32 pastry brushes to provide the plumes for the hats. In later years, the uniforms were made by seamstresses Ethel Best and Ivy McKenzie. The satin uniform with purple cape was decorated with military-inspired buttons and braiding, typical of majorette teams. The matching satin hat was emblazoned with the Elks logo. The team made their first appearance on May 24, 1949, as part of the Elks May Day celebrations. The initial group had 32 members, 24 with 6 spares. The age limit at that time was 16 to 30, and many of the members were young married women. By 1952, the Valiette ranks were filled mainly with teenagers, and some drummers were younger than that. On April 29, 1950, the famed English entertainer Gracie Fields was brought in by the Elks to perform a concert at the Drill Hall, what we know as Glenwood, and the Valiettes provided an honour guard. It's a task they would repeat in Parksville in 1951, serving as honour guard for Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip. The group grew over the years, with reportedly up to 120 members, though the largest group photos show numbers closer to 60. The team expanded to include an acrobatic section, bagpipe, bugle, and drum bands. In this 25-year reunion photo, we see former members of the Valiettes modeling the different hats worn. This Glengarry hat was part of the band's kilted uniform. The era of the Valiettes ended in 1956, when organizational and expense difficulties led to the disbanding of the group. That's all for today. Thanks for watching the Alberni Valley Museum's Museum at Home. We're at ADSS today. We're doing our Speed Watch program. It's part of the community policing suite of programs that we deliver to the community. Our Speed Watch are volunteers. They're out here really raising awareness around speeding in school zones. Uh, we're back to school right now, obviously, and not a lot of not all drivers are aware that they have to slow down to 30k uh, between the eight hours of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So the stats show that speed awareness slows traffic down in different corridors. We have high crash zones in this community uh, that we tend to set up on, like Johnson Road is a corridor. We really want to slow people down through there, coming in and, and through town. Uh, school zones, playground zones. Um, and you know some of the bigger streets like Stamp Avenue, Beaver Creek, we really want to focus on uh, getting people to change the behavior, slow down and check their speed. They don't issue tickets really. The Speed Watch program is all about showing drivers what their speeds are to create perhaps a change in behavior uh, to say, oh, uh, I'm going a little fast. Now, uh, if they're really speeding, we'll record uh, their license plate number and a warning letter will be sent out uh, by the detachment 
as another form of prevention to say, hey, you were caught speeding, slow down. It blows me away, really. The dedication these people have, they don't ask for anything. And they come out time and time again because they care about their community. You know, they do way more than just speed uh, awareness or speed watch. Uh, we also check for people on their phones, so we're doing cell watch at the same time today, so uh, making sure people aren't distracted. We are going to start up our crime watch program, which is really getting out on the streets, driving around, observing, reporting, and deterring crime. So the extra eyes for the police. The old saying is, don't cry, apply. And uh, so if you're seeing issues in the community, uh, the police can only do so much. And, you know, join us, help us make that change, help us bring safety and security to the community through the volunteer programs. Our group is in need of new volunteers, uh, so please go visit our website uh, at www.pacommunitypolicing.com so that you can learn more about all the programs we provide, and how to apply, all the prerequisites. There's extensive training that goes along with volunteers uh, when you come on board. There's lots of good structure and support uh, for the volunteers. They feel like they're doing something that's important.